Hi, everyone. Richard Carlton. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. Welcome to our review today of the Claris Engage 2024 event. Uh, I'm going to press do the, the housekeeping real quick. If you go to fmtrain.tv, you press the live tab up here at the top. You can see that today is going to be a recap. we got Christian Schmidt's uh, face there, but I've also got Taylor Sharp from uh, Taylor Made Services in Texas, an awesome guy, I had dinner with him. Then I got Christian uh, Olson from RCC, uh, who took a different take on my take from DEF CON, so it'll be interesting to hear the perspectives. All right, so with that in mind, I'm gonna quit sharing my screen. Well, let me cover my screen here real quick, and then I will explain to everyone what, what went on with Claris Engage. So Claris Engage, so here's what happened, for, for those of you wondering. So I, I didn't get to do a lot of the events and sessions because, frankly, I was busy dealing with the keynote address and dealing with the executive team at Claris. And so what the goal was or what we did for those of you who watched this is that we met with the executive, uh, Brad and the other executives the next morning immediately went through the keynote of what we could keep. Then we did a review on it the same day. So we got that pushed out. RCC, thanks to a bunch of you who I guess submitted our name to Claris. We, we received the training uh, company of the year award. It was really nice. Um, once again, this is uh, Apple had a nice facility, and, and you folks are going to talk about this. I'm just covering the high level parts from my perspective, real quick. We talked about this plane yesterday. This is the marketing one, but Claris is in this mode where they're showing you what they've done, what they're actively working on, and what their backlog priority is. The backlog is a, a new level of transparency they have not had before, um, which is really great. I'm happy they are doing that. And so we covered that during the live stream yesterday. There's the there's the marketing plan and backlog, but then the product management one which is frankly more people are more interested in that all the set let me just cover up front all the sessions were recorded and my understanding as of yesterday is that if you want the sessions you need to pay the nine either you had to go to the event pay for registration or which we did at rcc we did but i can't share them with you because they're kind of literally copyrighted materials you have to pay the 99 bucks it's a it's a good way of getting copies of all the videos the keynote is not in there right now because they have to sanitize it for confidential stuff. Little bits of it were confidential. And so we're going to talk to these gentlemen about what they thought at the event. So I'm going to kind of step away a little bit unless it gets unsavory, right? But uh, Christian, I was worried about the big corporate, the overall messaging. Christian was worried about AI, adult beverages, and uh, and enjoying the event because it was his first time there where Taylor's been there a bunch of times, right? So. Christian Schmidt, you have your outline. If you want to kind of go through that, what you thought too. Let's start at something and let's start at the date. February for a conference from Claris. That's a bit strange. Usually they put the conference in, in the summer. And right. especially they released a new version before the conference. So we could learn all about the new version at the conference. Okay. So can I, okay. I, I got to stop interviewing. The problem was is that before sometimes Claris has shipped a release like the day before. Right. And then the, and then if there's a bug with it or a problem, then they, they're, they're, they're the conference are already booked full. And then you have everyone going, it's broke. It doesn't work. And they're losing their minds. Right. And, and, and Kalman, Rick Kalman and the product managers have been there for a long time. Know this. We, we were there. Taylor Sharp, it was FileMaker 15 or 16 or something. They did this and they thought it'd be all great. And then the whole world explodes like the week before. And so the conference instead of talking about, let's buy this or do this. Let's talk about monkey bread because it's so awesome. It sucks all the oxygen out of the room, and everyone's talking about how soon do we get a V V V release to fix the bugs, right? So I'm just going to let you know, winter's weird. I'm glad they didn't ship a new version the week of. Just my vote. Sorry, I'll, I'll be quiet. Yeah, and maybe maybe uh, Christian and Taylor can speak more to this because I've not been doing a, a DevCon before, but I know it. Whenever the team from RCC would get back, they would talk about all the new stuff that was coming. And a common well, theme I felt at all the sessions I went to was what we're showing you is here right now, or it's actually even been here a while, you're just not using it. Well, one of the big benefits in the past, and I don't know that it's something that they need to, to do, but um, was that if you spent the big bucks to go on the big conference, you were given a development copy of the soon to just recently released or a current version of FileMaker Pro. And it was one of the perks. And it was just kind of had gotten to be kind of be expected. And maybe it shouldn't be. Didn't they do but, that? Didn't they give the ETS yeah. to everyone? Yeah, the ETS. The ETS. I'm just talking out loud. I'm not, I'm just saying that 
the, the, the future version of ETS when everyone got that, that came up yesterday in the live stream. So I think you're right. I think you're right. My, my problem yeah. is I'm an ETS program, so I forget what comes from where. <laughs> so, but, but anyway, it's just one of the things that, that, that is part of doing the conference is getting excited about things. So obviously new latest release products are, are, are what gets us excited. Um, I will also say that's kind of why probably to me, the biggest disappointment of the conference was how it ended. It ended with a whimper. I'm used to the conferences ending with a big, let's get together. Claris management gets together. Rah, rah, rah. Here's our exciting stuff. Send off. It's almost like a religious experience, you know, get excited about our products and go do good. And it just, you know, it wasn't bad. It just ended. <laughs> Yeah, it ended with Apple security kicking you out of the building. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the conference ended at four o'clock with the last session, and then you had to five to leave the building. Yes, yes. And, and that also gets back to the location, which I understand it saved the money, and there were some, it was practical, but it certainly is not a destination hotel that is there to service customers and then foster. Uh, social activities and networking like we were kind of used to in in previous destination locations. Christian Olson, did you have the polish of the, so let's talk about that facility is new, new, okay. We had 500 people there plus whatever support people were there. So uh, figure 620 with Clevis. With 620 with Clevis? Oh, I was about yeah, to get 600, 600 20, attendees, 20 Clevis. 20, 20 Clevis. So the question is, is, how what I mean the polish of the facility, especially the fifth floor, was off the hook, right? And we're talking high end. I mean that felt really nice. Chris, sure looked good. Yeah, I I was really before before Engage started. One of the things I was telling friends and family that I was really excited about was seeing the Apple campus. That's just kind of cool to get to go there, and it was it was beautiful and it was clean. And I don't have a single complaint there, especially the main key, uh, room that they would do presentations. The seats were comfortable. Um, with that being said, and again, I can't compare to another Engage, but I I felt very disjointed. Um, if I wanted to go find someone, I'm going up and down four different levels. If I wanted to go from one vendor to another, I didn't like the whole elevator situation. And then the stairs were in different spots. So the campus was beautiful, and I'm, I'm not knocking them on that. Um, if I if I could have had it my way, it would just be on one level, if you will, easy to kind of navigate and find people. Um, but the way that they put it all together and the food and everything, I mean, it was beautiful, brand new, Apple-esque, just a little disjointed. Right. I, I, and I I kind of agree. I, I wasn't disappointed at all. I, I, it, it, I think the conference went well. There's just, a, I have lots of perspectives of things I think could have gone better. And uh, and I think, app, you know, the Claire's people know as well as everybody else that the networking wasn't as ideal being at a business location that wasn't a destination hotel location. And they all know that. And I assume that will probably be rectified in the next conference. Uh, if it doesn't, we'd get really excited about it. But, um, you know, there, but there are some things that come with, you know, the expectations that we've had in, in past uh, hotels. Um, the, the food was okay. It, I thought it, it was, was great. I mean, I like, yeah. I've, I've been there where some of the, a couple hotels, the food would gag a dog, right? This was actually pretty good apple. Right. Food. Well, so. then again, if you know the Austin food trucks, I think they could have rolled up several of those there and probably done it cheaper and better, but you know, you, every, yeah, every place has things like that. I, I didn't like, dislike it, but I thought they were certainly easier. Certainly, they went all out on the first uh, opening night dinner thing. There was some. Really yeah, that good was off the hook. That I haven't yeah. had too many dinners that were that awesome. That was that was really a nice party that opening night. Yeah, um, and, that, and doing that good of food for a large number of people is actually really hard to do. So for any caterer, but but um, for those, for, so I don't know that I have photos of this too much, but the that we were. For that first night, it's one of the Apple cafeterias for the entire campus. It's a two-story giant. It had to be a hundred thousand square feet or something. It was huge, and they could feed all. They could feed probably five thousand, six thousand people on one pass. As, you know, I still think they could have probably done you know hamburgers and sandwiches and tacos probably easier than what they did. 
the nice thing about in the past, a lot of times was we had a, a luncheon room that we met at and around the outside, they often had the vendors. And so what was nice was you ate, but you saw the vendors, you could get up and go talk to the vendors, come back and sit down. There was a lot of foot traffic to the uh, easily get to the vendors. And it was just kind of part of lunch was also hanging out with the vendor area. And I kind of like that. And I think the vendors, obviously vendors want foot traffic. That's why they spend money to be a sponsor. <laughs> you know, I don't want Christian, you're a sponsor. You, you speak yeah. on it. Well, I didn't have a booth for this conference. So we had lunch, I think in five, six, seven, eight rooms split over the, the building and different levels. The food was uh, seems to be what Apple typically serves because it was similar to what we got to, to the developer conference 2019, the Apple Worldwide developer conference. So they had pre-packaged food like bowls or uh, um, like burritos, this uh, rolled up sandwiches. If you looked for a space to sit, it could be that you run in a full room and you couldn't find a spot. Uh, other rooms were half empty. So it was a little bit well distributed. Could be better, yeah. I thought that part was a challenge because I was either A, trying to find my group to go and sit with, which meant running up and down the stairs or try, I only rode the elevator a couple of times, or just to compare it with pause, I found that I was constantly meeting new people and getting to the network, but going into a full room or trying to find people, I felt like I made less connections. I, I got to see people from previous um, uh, events, which was cool, but I, I didn't feel like I was able, as able to easily connect with people during lunchtime. And like you said, Taylor, I, I didn't experience that. I would have loved to be able to have one food area and kind of see the vendors. I felt like it was harder to go experience the vendor area, having it kind of spread out like that. And there was, I think it was like seven, eight rooms to eat in. At previous conferences, we had um, tables with topics. Like you had tables, uh, one day you had tables where you say there are people from Europe, people from South America, people from Australia, so they could find each other. The other thing, there were tables with topics like um, you know, the custom web publishing people, the web direct people, the PHP users, uh, whatever. Find That's really neat. Yeah, so you had a topic for your table. That was also nice. And especially, yeah, having the lunches distributed over the building, uh, not so good. So um, the other thing I wanted to comment on is um, when you're coming from Europe, a trip to the conference can easily cost you $5,000. So you need flights, you need a week of hotel. You don't stay just for three days. You stay for a little bit longer. You want to do a little bit sightseeing. You may want to bring family. And um, when we had the conference in Orlando, I said, well, that's great. Um, maybe in five years we are back in Orlando. I can bring family and we can have a nice vacation there. So all the people who wanted to use the conference to, to make a little bit of vacation with um, their partner, maybe wife, significant other, whatever. Um, yeah, in, in the past. You couldn't really bring a wife. Yeah, in the past, uh, the destinations, you know, like Orlando or in Miami Beach or, you know, uh, San Diego with the zoo, there was always some reason to bring uh, someone other than just, just a professional beating. If you wanted to bring family there, it seemed to be something more really. Uh, and uh, you were also maybe they did it this time, but you um you were off. It seemed like you were more encouraged to, you know, bring a spouse to the a special event night thing. Um, of course, you know, everything was a little more. The other thing, too, is keep in mind one of the big things about the conference is not only is it not a destination location, but we were a short a day. So those of us who have done things in the past, we're used to having one more day of doing a lot of these things and so uh some ways it seemed kind of rushed and then suddenly ending and we're being as christian said being pushed out by apple security <laughs> you know so um the um, other thing is this extra day this helps people uh coming from far away because they prefer to fly to a conference for three or four days uh, easier than just for two days and not everyone took the training on the first day so you had the keynote in the evening and then two conference days. 
um, if you ask people uh, from Europe if they want to spend the money on on, on the travel, so a lot passed this time. I, I know that the other seniors, when we were booking this, because I kind of coordinated with three others uh, at RCC, and they were immediately like, "There's they're missing a day. And so one of them was like, well, I'm going to leave on Thursday. And then that kind of just spread. And so several of us, we left Thursday. And so we didn't even stay. I didn't get kicked out of the building by Apple. We had already actually headed off to the airport. And I think it would have been nicer um, the way it was described to me. There's normally a last day that's kind of a quick meet and greet. And then people more or less go. Um, so I didn't even get kicked out. I, I left in the middle of the L LML uh, session. And then it was like, like you said, it kind of ended just, it just ended. Yeah. And, and there's some little things that I wish they would also, you know, little things logistically they can do. For example, name tags. Don't, you know, you always print the name tags on both sides. So when it flips over, you still see who the person is. And you also have a little clip on it so you can slide it up so that your name tags up here, you know, and it's not hanging down at your belly and you're not staring down at someone, some woman's belly to see what their name is and looking like an idiot, you know. <laughs> That is a good point. I, I was getting thrown off because having the name Christian, normally when I'm in a public area, if I hear my name, it's pretty obvious that someone's yelling to me. But I found multiple times I'm hearing Christian's name being yelled out. And it was only a couple days later that I'm like, I bet you Christian Smith was nearby. <laughs> I was looking around like, why is someone yelling for, for me? That, right that now? German guy, there he is. <laughs> uh, the other thing I, I noticed is we had a few young people there. And I talked to a few of them, and actually, they came to the conference because there was a training day. So the training day brought new people there who not just came for the conference, but also for the training. So it's maybe yeah. easier sell to to their own company executive uh, to send you to the conference if you also get the training day. I didn't um, even consider that. What What did you guys uh, think of the awards uh, ceremony? Well, we got an award, so it's fantastic. No, <laughs> what, did, what did you guys think certainly, of that? Certainly, sir. Okay, how about this? One, one thing that was very unique about this is in the past, when you were given an award, you came up to the front, you met the CEO of Claris, you shook their hands and took a picture. What happened this time? You stood up and maybe saw the person in the room or looked around to see where they were. And yeah, that's a really good point. I, I thought that was kind of odd that they didn't have the person come up and accept that. It seems like a pretty traditional thing to do. I'm sure they saved some time. There probably was a time thing, but still, I think, you know, it's important oh. to recognize people. And I think that it's it's really important to those who receive awards to be recognized in the community in a way that very much emphasizes that. I think that's a very valued Thing that they can do that they could spend just a little bit more time on just my perspective that i don't well know if they know how much it really means to people to receive an award that's a big deal you know but taylor half of the people were in the other room so that not was everyone was another the problem room. you know uh you, you know uh, not having a big enough facility to seat everybody have some people having to watch it on tv is certainly not ideal <laughs> I, I was fortunate to be in the room. When I talked to some of the people afterwards at the dinner, I didn't realize that the the screen was freezing or glitching, kind of like we've had with Discord today. And so were both of you in the room? Because others were saying they were they were a little annoyed. You were not in the room, Christian? I was there, but oh. I didn't see any glitch. What I noticed is when I came to the shelf uh, with the awards later at the reception, um, there were more awards than they mentioned and the ceremony. So Interesting. Like, like, for example, here, um, Clemens Kegebein from the Filemaker magazine got an award, but it was not mentioned in the in the keynote, as far as I know. I mean, I could have been slep sleeping uh, for a minute, but... At the very end, did they list... I, I feel like there was almost at the very end, oh, and here's some other ones, and then they moved on from that, but I might be remembering uh, wrong. Maybe I missed that, but uh, I, I was amazed to see... Um, the shell, shelf with all the awards, and uh, there were a couple of uh, I didn't remember that they got mentioned. Well, and I think to Taylor's point, I think it's important whether people are coming up on stage or not to feel like you are getting recognized for what you've done there. Um, and that would be really unfortunate if there's people that were getting awards that quietly got it in the background. Because as beautiful as the award is, I think there's something nice about being recognized 
to the community like that. And it makes a good um good thing for the ending session. Like if if they could have done this as an ending session and said, here are all the awards and uh, we recognize the people. And then of course they didn't mention the next conference. Um which yeah, is usually but the, the other end thing that usually happens on the wrap-up session is the where is the next one gonna be? And everybody gets all excited about it. It's 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 a almost like a special, you know, we're gonna announce it and they big long pregnant pause and music and then ta-da and everybody cheers and <laughs> well, you know. even though we left early i thought it was really odd i kept asking this and there's no closing session that that's such a normal thing to have at conferences so i was i was really thrown off or i thought it was peculiar I, I think it got style. lost to the you know you cut a day out and they just had to squeeze too many other things in it's just my guess but uh i sure hope that we go back to an additional day and we really do have a good send off uh in closing session next time because it's you know a lot of this is about rah 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 let's pump up the excitement about the product and you know people using it so and not to bag on them, but I think one of the repeating themes I'm seeing here, not everyone being in the one room, the seven different eating spots. I went to the partner sessions at the end of the day on um, uh, the, the the second day, and that seemed like a great place to network. There was conversations I want to hear, but it was so jam-packed in that room, I just ended up leaving. I, I couldn't handle being squished up against people and trying to navigate that that really cramped room with how many people wanted to be in there so i'd love to see another one where it feels like there's more space for us to actually like i love that idea that you were talking about krishna with the uh, themes on tables like what a cool thing to get to go over and talk to people that you otherwise don't know because there's a topic that you might be interested in okay i got another thing to point out i i hate to bring this up you, you have to at some point eat your own dog food is the old saying <laughs> Why the hell can you not do a registration in FileMaker? Why are we not doing surveys? We were doing it in SurveyMonkey instead of Studio or FileMaker. Why are we, you know, why do we not have an app that we can log in that has everything on it that, that's a live served app that if they make any updates, they can see where rooms are, presenters. The that was so presenters. miserable not being able to find the sessions easily. Double Find the URL on double factor authentication. Yeah, yeah, You've right, been right, signed right. out. <laughs> Especially when you have a product that does all that elegantly and perfectly. Why not use your own product for it? You know, I'm Did like, you know someone had an app? I found out about it later who put no. all that on there. Yeah. Oh. So there were some people at RCC who were like, oh, you didn't download the app, like on the FileMaker solution. And it's like, no, that would have been great to know about. But that wasn't Claris that did that. That was just somebody who decided to do it themselves. Yeah, anyway, I think well. in the in the past, these apps have been made by some partner. Not by yes, but, and they were downloadable. And the problem with it, everyone was they would give you one that was a you know month out in advance, and then they would have changes, then they would have another update, and then another update. You know, we have FileMaker server. Oh no, we can all log into one database that stays current all the time. I mean, uh, yeah, hey, this well, you made a good point why, there, Taylor. Why can't partners log in and see who their uh, customers are and their contract numbers and when they're expiring? But, you know, <laughs> great opportunity for us all to see what Studio is capable of doing. Well, and you talk about a perfect use for it. You know, why Why are they not doing surveys in, in Studio? You talk about the perfect product for it, but, you know. So, yeah, not to back on them, but that that was for me a real frustrating thing. One of the days, like, oh, I just want to double check the schedule. And I felt like that was a difficult thing. It was nice that there was people on all the floors. Someone heard me once say I'm looking for something and ran over and told me where to go. But opening up the schedule and finding things was I think that's a I think that's a really a good point there. Yeah, that's something you should tell people who haven't been at the conference. But there were at least 20 Apple people. So Apple security and just Apple, I don't know, door opener, uh, people who told you yeah. where to go, where's the restroom, you know, this. just well, people who tell you where to go. The one thing it's that you have to realize everywhere. about that is if, if you're in a hotel and you see a security person and you ask, where's the bathroom, where's so-and-so floor, 
They are there to serve you. They will help you out. And even if they don't know the answer, they'll find someone to do it. Apple security is obviously they have different priorities. And I get it because we're on a business location. But if you talk to any of those Apple security people, they were not to answer your question. They couldn't tell you where the bathroom was that was right next to them. They would just, you know, they, they were told not to answer questions. They were focusing on security. Okay, I get it. But that's the difference between being in a secure facility versus a hotel that is trying to do customer service. And, and I get that at an Apple campus, they need to be secure. And so maybe they couldn't avoid that. But I'm just saying those, those are some of the niceties at being at a destination location at a facility that really has employees focused on serving you. So not I not that a lot of security people were rude to me or anything. They I you know not, I'm just saying that their instructions because I specifically asked one and she's like, no, I I, I can't, you know, I, I'm doing my job here. I can't talk to you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I will really say that the parking was real convenient for me though. Yeah, the parking oh, was oh, yeah. two two very big parking garages with four or oh, five. Well, I got parked right by the front door. Oh, are you talking about because you're one, your uh, your your unicycle? <laughs> we may have accidentally parked an Apple employee parking one of the days, but oops. <laughs> no, actually, at uh, the first one for the keynote, I came early and I parked at a spot in uh, ground level, where where it was signed as visitor parking, right next to the door of the garage. So, oh, that's fantastic. That works. That works. Uh, no, and one of the things I was going to ask you guys is what you thought of the keynote, um, having gone to previous ones. But I was also curious what you guys thought of the sessions. Yeah, the only thing about the keynote, of course, was it also includes the awards. And I've already said I didn't like, you know, I wish they'd brought the award recipients up for a picture with the boss man, you know. But but uh, keynote was fine. I actually saw something in there I had no idea they were working on that I've been bothering them on for years. So it's fun to see that they're doing some things. Uh, you know, obviously they, you know, the idea is to put a spit, positive spin on some things that were a bit awkward that some of us knew were awkward in the background. They did a pretty good job about it, but, you know, they're having to, you know, obviously refocus in a way that a lot of us developers knew they had to a while back, but, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't do any good to say I told you so, but at least they is, spun it as a communication thing instead of we did wrong. But uh, I don't, as long as we're headed in a better direction, I guess I'm not going to care too much. But I felt like there was implicit owning of the, some of the mistakes that were made and that were headed in the right direction. There wasn't this overt uh, discussion of it, but I felt like that was implicitly in there of like, hey, we love FileMaker again. And we're going to Good. put some love back into it. Well, and I, you know, I come from the side of things, you know, I make my business off FileMaker. You know, Connect is fine. Studio is fine. Bento's fine. None of those made me any money. FileMaker makes me money. You know, yeah. quit spending money on things unless it ties into how I make money, you know, is kind of my perspective. But anyway... No, there was a big, just so you understand, that within the executive team, there was conversations about the messaging and how they wanted to take ownership, and they didn't want to kind of come off as being apologetic, et cetera, which I get all that, right? So they, because they, you know, the trick is to move from their mistakes and move forward. So in terms of the event itself, I was talking to Brad Freitag, the CEO, and he, and he, and he was like, man, this is really hard. This is before the event. This is before he actually got there. He already knew it was going to be really hard because all the people who had put the show on previously were gone, had retired. Uh, COVID, retired them out, whatever. And so the, the people that they had there largely, I mean, Julie Sigfrenius and Rosemary TG and some folks had already had some combat experience, but Rosemary or uh, Julie uh, Sigfrenius was supposed to be retired. So she's supposed to be gone, all this sort of stuff. And then suddenly she shows up, right? So they brought her out of retirement. They, they dragged that, that out of retirement. Anyway, so it was very interesting. So uh, uh, from that perspective, so and, and to you, give them some credit too, because yeah, the, the, there was a lot of rooms that were crowded. I didn't like the four stores, four floors. I do think it's worth noting. Um, I thought the sessions were really great. Um, I got. I haven't, heard out any, of, I haven't heard any negative things about the session. What was your favorite session? I want each of you tell me your favorite sessions, except for Taylor. Favorite so sessions. Uh, Christian, what was your your favorite session? 
I would say I take the one about server security from Vimdicor. Yeah, we're trying to get Wim on the show here, um, and and uh, they're working on that. But he uh, he's a powerhouse of knowledge, and Claris respects him for that, and he's really helpful for everyone in the community. So I, yeah, he's he's awesome. Um, Christian Olson, your favorite session or session? Because the AI was kind of like this loose group of them. So yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to definitively say, oh, this one. So I'm going to do the typical. I, I like the handful. There were there were two on AI if I grouped them, or three really, but two in particular that I really liked. Uh, Ronnie's demos and Chris Ippolite. I think they both did a good job of saying, this is here now, this works, and they showed some really cool use cases. Because here at RCC, and Richard, you know this, I've been on the AI bandwagon in terms of we need to embrace this technology. It's really cool. But then you asked me the real obvious question of, but how are you using it? Yeah. And um, that was, other than me as a developer using it like Google and to, to help write things, I didn't have a good answer. And those two sessions, Chris and in particular, they showed some cool, I actually came out of Engage and reached out to my clients and said, we should do this in your solution and told yeah. them about it. And they're really excited and we have plans. Um, I really quite like the transactional one, um, the, 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 uh, the guys, the advanced one, I've haven't gone in touches as much as I should. And they gave me some compelling reasons to go and use it. Outside of the fact that I am pro transactions and putting more of those in, the performance improvements was something that I wasn't aware of. So really, I have their demo file on my downloads. I haven't gone through and played with it. I will touch that the Clara Studio one actually gave me some use cases and I'm going to play with that. Um, and I didn't get a lot out of this one, but for people that do pay the $99 and can watch the videos, I would highly recommend the modular file maker by, by Klaus. Um, that's something that I have been aiming to do myself for years. So it was a reinforcement of stuff that I feel like I'm already doing. But if you're, if you're trying to become better at making modular code, I thought he did a phenomenal session on that. So those are my favorite ones that I pulled out of it. Let me just uh, jump on the, uh, and I'm, and I'll go to both of you on your, top sessions here uh well chris well christian schmidt had his but on the ai one so just to frame the conversation so i guess part of me being here is useful because i can put things in context better than most people so the ai capabilities are have been largely api driven there you can kind of wire it into filemaker now right with the current product and market um however with the filemaker 21 slash 24 release in the new version there's a big chunk of it about the ai okay um, the trick for Claris is to make some of the AI stuff sufficiently low hanging fruit that it doesn't require anyone on this show. So let's just pretend like I'm the dumbest person here, which I'm pretty sure I am. Um, I can do stuff with AI without requiring Christian Olson or Taylor Sharp or Christian Schmidt or someone to do some gee whiz warp speed calculus, right? Because we've actually looked at some of the stuff that they're doing inside of it. One of the things that Claris is doing inside of FileMaker 21 is beefing out the SQL capabilities of the product. And you're like, why would they do that? Because AIs like to talk in SQL. It's just the way they work. And so as a result of that, yeah, I know I talked to uh, someone from Calibri uh, earlier today, or they were Calibri, et cetera. And they, uh, they didn't know about that, right? And I said, you know, it was part, it kind of gets slipped in. And if you're part of ETS and you want to be part of it, listen, if you could, if you want to be part of ETS and find bugs in the product and see the product that's coming up, shoot Rick Kalman at Claris an email. He says that if you can figure out his email, which is not very hard, we've even talked about it here before, um, and you email him to ask to be on ETS, he will add you ETS, and you could have the new secret, triple secret version of FileMaker. Tell people what ETS is. ETS is external testing service. It's basically alpha to beta testing alpha to beta testing and, and it, could they Claris doesn't use alpha and beta at all ever um uh, but they you know they, they loosely alpha is like you know ratchety and barely functional and it falls over and blows up frequently we don't see that too often with them but you see a lot of in between because beta with once Claris gets to the point where they're beta i mean basically it's cooked in they're doing final re testing to, to simplify you know make sure it's good but they're not really looking for people's opinion when they hit beta because they're done with what they're going to do. They're just going to execute the plan. Your job is to find bugs and test it with whatever version of Mac or Windows or some plug-in. You can find out Christian Schmidt has a memory mm -hmm. leak, and they blame it on Christian. The FileMaker server doesn't crash. It's Christian Schmidt's fault, blah, 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 right? I'm making fun of Christian because he's here. But uh, these are important things. So the, the next release of FileMaker is uh, 
I don't know when they're every three or four months. And the last one was right after Thanksgiving or right during Thanksgiving, Christian. So they, they should be shipping it in March, but I haven't heard anything about it. And I don't think it's, it's a big release. It's a big release. So they got the AI stuff in it. And I really don't want them to, to ship it before it was ready. That was back that conversation where certain people at Claris, Hey, let's ship this new version. It'll be so amazing. to have a new version at the event. And for them to have done that, they would have had to ship 21 months and months early, right? So I'm glad someone went timeout on someone that. Someone right? say second quarter or so. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah anyway. I, from what I'm hearing, their Q2, uh, Q, well, our calendar Q2, somewhere in the calendar Q2. So calendar Q2 is April, May, June, right? Probably on the front part of that, I would guess, but I don't know. They haven't talked to uh, me about it, and I'm down there all the time. So... No idea. And uh, to anyone testing an ETS version, this version shows features in development for the next version and future versions. So you may get a, a version which has features and then they strip it down to the ones which work. And this uh, these get shipped in a new version. So you may see features which do not ship in 21, but may ship in 21.1. Ah. So, what what what, what do we know what features are going to be held 21. Dot, would you say 21.0 Christian what's going to slide or you think it might slide or you're not sure well i have it, no idea not supposed to talk about it though yeah i, I, know. I think he was just saying that some are going to come in the next release whereas other things you're interacting with could come oh. in the future they've got, future they've got everything in it will they show got up. Line, every, they got they, they got uh, work lined up for the next 12 months i mean actually really not even that far they they work really hard on their because they have they call them scrums in agile and it's like a scrum is like think of rugby and a bunch of people beating the out of each other in rugby when they say that i think of that but uh every two weeks they do a bunch of work and then there's a, a or two or three weeks and they review it and they get together and it's big accountability and they're just going very fast i don't think they have hardcore plans out beyond about 90 days because they fit them all in the scrum so the results of the scrum results in the next set of deliverables with a kind of loose idea of where they're going right and so um that continues every day in fact i don't know where they're at today on it and to me it doesn't really matter because i need them to kind of get to the point where it's semi-stable and semi-happy and then they turn it loose to us in a product but yeah, well, we see it ourselves i mean for the plugin i've been working on some features for more than one release so oh yeah oh yeah. I, yeah we ship it when it's finished and at the point where we say we can give it to people but otherwise, we may delay it another version. So. Um, as a reminder, for those of you who are wondering about this, there was an update on Tuesday, but there was a security release on Tuesday with some other miscellaneous operating system fixes. So the current shipping market is 20.3.2. And what you can tell is if you look at the last number there, that's the build number. So every three days or so, they do a new build of FileMaker. So, or maybe even every day, depends on how busy they are, but it's when they compile it, every time they compile it, they get a new number. So when they released this one here, it was on build 31, and then 170 builds later is this next version. So obviously it's more than one a day happening here because it hasn't been 170 days. So, or maybe it has been 170 if they did one a day, but um, that gives you an idea of how much work has gone into it, right? Because then they would have a new feature and say build 40, and then build 45, it's horrible. Then build by build 50, maybe it's stable, right? Christian, see how that works, right? So that's a really inter interesting indicator there. All right. Did any one of you do some sightseeing in Austin? I, really I went to a really good barbecue place. The, 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 the Campbell campus is in the middle of all these bike famous bike trails and the Ninja Trails, the Metropolitan Park and stuff. So I did miles and miles of uh, wheelie riding. So that was fun. And also some good uh, Black's Barbecue and uh, Ruby's and, uh, uh, you know, Lockhart's. So anyway, I, I went the weekend before, so I had a whole extra weekend to play around. I would I would simply tell everyone that if you're going to go to when you go to FileMaker the developer conference I'm not talking about pause on air but developer conference half of that is all about social and I mean social I mean dinner and lunch and alcohol and whatever social means to you that's what that is it's not even so much hey did you know how to build a transaction with the G Wiz AI blah 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 that's half of it the other half is social and I don't know that a lot of people unless you've experienced you get that. 
but we go out, we do things right. Christian, a number of the dinners and meals were out and Christian Schmidt was there and Taylor dragged me around the opening day before we ever got there. We went and saw the uh, Austin campus. We went, all over the place. I got a tour of Austin because uh, Taylor used to live, he went to school in Austin, right? Ooh. So he knows like the back oh. of his hand. So he's driving all over the place. So um, now it's it's a big part of that. So that's what if they pick a location that's central, like uh, uh, Texas was great, but it wasn't, it wasn't Dallas, it was San, San Antonio. That one wasn't around a bunch of stuff, but they were in a big facility where there was a lot to do, right? A lot of restaurants, like five or six, eight restaurants in this facility big fancy five-star kind of restaurants that's a big deal um the one that was in Na uh wasn't nashville what was the one out there that was around there Ga the gaylord maybe that was dallas right did we do a dallas yeah, event so. yeah that was dallas twice yes the gaylord is a funny facility it's like a giant it's like the superdome uh, only bigger than the Superdome, and it's like a big football stadium. But inside, there's a hotel and this jungle environment and light shows that go on the ceiling. And you're in, living inside a dome, basically. You're paying to live inside a dome with pools and water just off the hook. It's like being on a cruise ship that bolted to the ground. It's bolted. A cruise ship bolted down in Texas is what that is. So, Christian, did you did you do any sightseeing? I'm imagining you spent more than a couple of days since you had to fly over from Germany. Yeah. Um... If you fly over the Atlantic, you usually need to stay a week to get a cheaper rate with the airline. So I did some things like I drove to San Antonio and I drove to the Lexington aircraft carrier. So that Very was cool. Nice. Um, I can also tell you that in previous conferences, we met with a few people a day or two before the conference and then did sightseeing together. So while you went to maybe a ghost town in Phoenix to learn oh. something about the Wild West, uh, you talked about Farmaker on the way. Mm. You talked about things you think about the conference. And after the conference, you may even do some uh, tour together and maybe go out for diner. For diner. Uh, Taylor Sharp, I'm just going to ask this question. I need you to play it very G-rated for me. So do you, did, you, did I hear you before the live stream started that you met your first wife at a de FileMaker developer conference? No, I, I, I met a girlfriend. She was my, she be, I met her there and she became my girlfriend at my very first DevCon. So I say my DevCon got me a girlfriend. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that that's a, we warrant that success for everyone. <laughs> uh, but uh, you, there's a lot of people there, and, and that's the thing. Over the years, it used to be kind of funny. It was, I was all, you know, the programming business was a bunch of guys, and then slowly more and more women. And so you see this bigger in, uh, finger footprint of, you know, having an equal group of men and women, and it brings all sorts of great perspectives and things. And it didn't used to be that way. Anyway, it's good to it, see the different perspectives of different people. You want to see that. So, Richard, I know we're getting ready to land the plane here. Vincent had a comment in Discord. I, I wanted to reply to, but I also wanted to get Taylor and Christian's uh, uh, response to this. So I'm just going to read what he said here. He said, one of the best things of Engage, which I didn't attend, so just judging based on available data, is that it seems that Claris has finally realized the fluke Connect and Studio are. Um, I kind of have a response to that, but but Taylor and Christian, I'm curious, having gone to Engage, what would be your take on that? Uh, I I have not really, I did a little ETS with Connect and that was all I did because I understand API is fine and I didn't understand why I wanted to spend a bunch of extra money for, for something. And plus, you know, if I wanted free, there was the red, whatever. Uh, so I've been blowing Connect off and after the conference here, and now that it seems to be more integrated as being an extension of FileMaker, I'm a lot more interested in pursuing connect now whereas you know literally until this conference it's like connect fine the, i can already do the apis myself why do i need to, to have my clients spend money on it and i was just kind of ignoring it but uh now that they're making it more as a feature set expanding file maker and seeing file maker is the central thing i'm certainly more interested in will probably start doing some things uh with connect uh now that i view it from that perspective yeah they came came and got a little bit uh, more humble also. Um, so instead of pushing everyone to use Studio and Connect, they discovered that there's still a lot of work to do. Like when when I talk to people about, do you plan to use Studio? And, and people just say, well, as long as I can't copy one development I made in one account to another account, 
there's no way for me to sell a solution made in studio. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so all I was going to say to Vincent is I, I hear, I, I think he, he's picking up on like, oh, they've acknowledged that these are flukes, but I want to come out with exactly that conclusion. It seemed very clear to me through the conference that Claris is not giving up on Connect and Studio. They are heavily invested in those. What they came around on was realizing that we're all FileMaker developers. And like Taylor said, I make my money off of FileMaker. That's what makes me excited. And they can't just abandon this product and hope that we're all going to get on board with these new things that don't completely work. Um, I'm open to connect, but some of the other seniors I work with are just like, why would I do this? I already know how to. I think it's really appealing to some of the juniors on our team who don't know how to do it. Um, and I think that they're more honest about where these things are at. I think you said humble there, Christian, because at pause on air, I was talking to some of the studio team and not to bag on them, but they're like, this is ready to use. And I'm like, no, it's not. Just be, just acknowledge that you have something that will be cool in the future and it's not there right now. I did go to one of their studio sessions and I finally decided, you know, here's what I'm going to use studio for. I'll just share this with people. I won't use it with a client right now. It's not done. I don't trust it. You can't move the code around. Um, but I do think that there is a future for it. So I'm going to try using it for something internal for myself, for managing my own projects. That'll allow me to use it, see if it works and try to give Claris some feedback on this product. Uh, but no, I don't think, Vincent, that they're abandoning these. They probably do recognize that the community is not embracing them the way that they had expected that we all would and and richard you well, said you have more inst or sorry go ahead guys yeah what i wish you know being a file maker developer person is you know i really like that studio uses you know uh html in a different way that uh for you know making reports and layouts differently and i i like to har harness that because it's very different than the draco way of doing things you know, I wish they would take what they have good in the studio. For example, if I went to FileMaker and I chose a new layout, I choose, do you want the Draco version or do you want the studio version? Let me choose and that layout will be that way. And then if they would solve the, the logging in problem by saying, guest users that it connect to a FileMaker server don't count against any licensing. If they would bring those two together, I think they, you know, that would that was how I would do things to, to really integrated right. so anyway. i'm gonna i'm gonna thank both of you for this or all three of you for this i'm gonna wrap up the conversation with here with some actual uh forward-facing direction this was reinforced yesterday so this is a graphic that was output by claris uh during the event and uh it was during the keynote and once again this caused kind of an uproar because i got with brad and, and we decided that the messaging on this was just so important because even here the messaging is a little with people's interpretations it's they the, the community is not the messaging has just changed about every six months, and, and now it's finally to a spot where I think it'll be stable. So this is the overall world that we have. This is the, this is the systems that were where, where uh, Taylor uh, Taylor Sharp was talking about the money he's made with FileMaker, FileMaker Server, FileMaker Go, FileMaker WebDirect, File, FileMaker, FileMaker, FileMaker's over here. This is where they want to make a web-facing application that really scales, okay? And this is over here where they want to get into this connection. So this is the way they see it. This is the FileMaker world. It's an accessory to that. To help with that is the studio world. And down below here is the connection. The I'll just call it the API Zapier world, which is where Claris Connect lives. It's where, frankly, Apple Education is playing in here quite a bit as well. Now, that being said, Initially, they were saying, well, buy this, then buy this, then buy this. And it was making a real mess in terms of the licensing. And so let me bring it back to licensing here real quick. So the licensing um, is in progress. It's in changing. I'm going to show this slide. This is from the keynote. Once again, this is where they're going. They want to they want to basically focus everyone on kind of the on-prem idea. And it's $16, 16 dollars dollars per user per month. And what ends up happening is that they are going to bolt on a free level of studio or connect, this one's connect, and a free uh, free layer or free level of, of, st of studio and connect both. You get both of them for free. So if you buy it once, you're gonna buy it for five users or something, and then you're gonna get so many connections, et cetera, for connect and so many uh, interactive, I think they call them views, but they're a layout. They're gonna limit you to so many web screens that are views right down here and you get so many connections for the api access so this is where they're going okay this is announcement they are refining this this will be a blog post 
probably a live stream over the next, say, three weeks or so. Um, it's kind of tentative right now. If Juliana's watching this, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing this come out. But the thing is before is that it was always like, well, it's a separate product. No, it's a, it's the same product. It's different. It's going to, if someone says it's going to replace FileMaker, that's not true. There's all this mis-messaging that started in 2019. Some of the executives at Claris who were there at that time are no longer there. So the team that's there now has, has a grasp on reality. They they understand where they're going. They have a mission and they have a and they're trying to clean up any confusion. And this is one of those pieces. So obviously, if you wanted to buy a a a more beefy tier, I'll call it standard and then maybe beefy. So maybe twenty dollars a month or something, you could beef out and get more of these connections, et cetera, things like that. So clearly if this is like their, you know, basic level, then you could have other levels as well. It makes a lot of sense. And so that's kind of where this is going. So I'm really happy that they've made these decisions to simplify the messaging. I'm happy about that. If you have other questions, you can check out the live stream where we went through the keynote address and talked about this. But I think it's it's appreciated that, A, they realized mistakes were made. They won't say the word mistake, but the, they, they will say the words messaging was not as optimal as it should be. Okay. They understand it, right? So uh, I'm very excited about that overall. And, and Engage kind of reflected that. I was happy that they continued to carry the messaging that they'd been working on and no new surprise. I, I, when I went to engage, I was not surprised. It was because the messaging that they'd been giving out months before that was consistent. Does that make sense? When you go to a conference and people are surprised by the messaging, unless you're planning on giving everyone a million dollars in a wheelbarrow, every, every developer gets a free million dollars, that's a message that we're good with, but that pretty much doesn't happen. So uh, surprising the developers with messaging is not always great. Claris is being consistent in that area. I like that. So anyway, Christian and Christian, anything else? Uh, I want to point out that this year we have 10 more FileMaker conferences. Yeah, I know. They've got quite a few. They've got quite yeah. a few of those. Another 10 coming. Pick what you like. Uh, think about where you want to go. And please join. Please, please come out. Please join. Christian. Yeah. Christian, uh, and when you say 10 more conferences, these are like the different types of, I don't know if user groups the right word, but it's not by Claris, but the different. Well, they're not official Claris. They're, they're, well, cl the, are they the, like, the, like pause would be one of them here. or. Yeah. Pause There's a list on my website. If you want to see. Monkey bread software. Okay. Where do I go? On FileMaker, FileMaker yep. events. And, and then, then on the events left. And events and training. Yeah. So, All right, so I, I collect this list. Okay, so we got a Spanish cool. event in Spain. We got something in France. I don't speak French, so that I can't do too yeah, much of that. That's the English one. Dot FMP. Yep. Berlin. Yep. yep. Germany. Yes, uh, Canada. Australia. Yes, French Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's glad you German German I didn't know there were that many conferences. To be completely honest. Well, a lot of these were spawned because, see, like, th this is what they used to look like, right? So if I pop this over and I break this picture up, this is what they used to look like. There would be th almost 2,000 people in these things, right? It was huge. Now it's, you know, a lot smaller conferences, but it spreads Claris out because the executives are flying all – when they got done in Austin, uh, the exec team, a bunch of them flew promptly flew to Japan or Australia or someplace. So they're very, very busy. Um, and flying all over. So as long as you like to travel, it's great. If you like to sit at home and build databases and work for a living, that's a hard life to live. So, all right, that's, that's it, everyone. Enough. I appreciate Christian Schmidt. All right, I'm going to hit the button. I'm going to see you folks, to not tomorrow, Monday. Monday. Web Direct action. Here comes Web Direct on Monday. Yay! <laughs>
Well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir! Oh, 